All right, welcome to Black Book Basics. I'm Opus, this guy's Coach T. And then today we're gonna to be talking to you about no contact female psychology. So we're diving into the psyche of a woman and what she's going through when you're properly following the no contact rule after the breakup. After the breakup, there's a lot of emotions, there's a whirlwind of emotions that's going on. And we're gonna dive deep into her mentality and why she's reacting a certain way, why you in the wind while you're ghost. You don't gotta read her mind because by the time this video is over, you're gonna know what's on her mind. So what's going through a woman's mind when you're going through no contact? She wants to know why you're not calling because what do most guys do after a break of that? Blowing her phone up, they're blowing up her Instagram, they're calling her auntie, going up to her job, they're doing drive-by. So when you go ghost, when you're just in the wind, when it's cut and dry, silent, you're going from blowing up her phone. Why isn't this working? I need you back. Baby, please. You're getting on one knee. Baby, you sound like a Keith Sweat song from 1988. Baby, I'm oh, begging. God. Baby, I'm begging, begging, baby. That's, that's my oh, favorite R&B song, man. It's a, I like a Jodeci song. It's a rap. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sing that song to women all the time back in the day. And it worked. I got exactly where I wanted to be in the friend zone. <laughs> no, no, no. But. So what they're going to be wondering is, what is he doing? What's up? What's going on? You ain't calling her, blowing her phone up. You ain't singing 90s R&B music to her. She's wondering, what the hell? Most guys you, most guys do that to her. By the time a woman is like, you know, early 20s, she's, man, she'd had plenty of guys do the whole like calling, begging, or call her up. And this is what kills me. When guys call them up and they'll start like talking shit like, what, what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? You know, guys guys will get pissed off and insult a woman for breaking up with them. How could you do this, Amber? I gave you the best two years of your motherfucking life. You're just a little slut. You're just a fucking slut, Amber. You know, shit like that. It is, that makes no sense. When you separate yourself from them and you just kind of disappear out of her life, then she's going to be like, man, what's going on? She's going to wonder about you. That's the whole point of no contact is, to, is you want her to wonder about you. You want her to think about you. She ain't going to forget you. If y'all if y'all were dating, I mean, if it was like a, a, a relationship that lasted for like a month, okay, all right, you, chances are. Yeah, that's not know, a relationship. Yeah, it's not a relationship. If you had like a real relationship that lasted for like months, she ain't going to just like forget about you just like that. You know, she ain't going to forget about you. She'll be thinking about you. Throughout those months, every day she was thinking about you. Just because you broke up, she's not going to randomly just say, oh, I'm done thinking about him, never going to think about him ever again. She's going to keep thinking about you. It's almost like she had a routine with you. She always, you know, she woke up, she'll text you good morning or, you know, uh, you guys had plans or something like her week, her, her week life, whatever revolves around you. Basically when they're dating people, they think about them every fucking day. They just, they just do. That's what you do when you're dating somebody. But now when you separate and you go from talking to your boyfriend every single day or, you know, three days a week, whatever it may be. And then poof, you're gone. She's going to be wondering about you. And that's going to drive her crazy. That's going to rip her apart. She's going to wonder what the hell you're doing, where you're at. When we're doing one thing over and over again and she sees that you're blowing her up, you're begging her, or you're texting her every day. When she texts you, you text back within 15 seconds. And then when you go ghost, it's like a pattern interrupt. And we're in Detroit, so the weather doesn't really start getting nice until like June on a consistent basis. So so in March, you're used to 40 degree day, 45, 47, 48, 41. And then if it goes the next day, 75, it's almost like an apocalypse because that pattern of 40 degree days was interrupted. And when you go and break that pattern, when you interrupt that pattern, you become that 80 degree day. She's like, oh shit, what? Wait a minute, I, I'm not used to this. And whenever people aren't used to a certain thing, it causes mystery, it causes intrigue, and it's gonna provoke a reaction because they're not used to it. So you gotta become that 80 degree day. That's one of my favorite scenes in a wire. Stringer Bell was like, man, nobody wants a 40 degree day. You gotta be an 80 degree day after the breakup. When you go ghost, you get in her mind. And that's what you want. You can't stay in her mind if you're in her face all of the time. So you got to pull back and go ghost. And what also happens with the psychology of a female who, who's enduring the no contact is anger. You may think, well, I don't want to make her mad. How, I'm gonna, how am I going to reattract her if I'm making her mad? Yeah, you don't want your ex to go ahead and key your car up or anything like that. So we're talking about anger as far as, why is he not hitting me up? Why is he not blowing me up? Because they joke about that all the time. Like, well, oh, you know, <laughs> he won't stop hitting me. Like, Tarquavion Tar Tar won't stop blowing my phone up. Like, he doesn't even get the hint. I don't want him anymore. But when you pull back and don't do that, 
Oh, it's gonna make her mad. They wanna brag about stuff like that. I, we said this before in previous videos, but when girls, like when you're blowing their phone up, they're gonna show, they're gonna show their friends. Oh my God, he keeps calling me. He called me 30 times. Oh my God. They love bragging about that shit, okay? So when you're not doing that, it's almost like, it's almost like you're offending them in a way. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not worth blowing my phone up. I'm, I'm not worth calling 30 times in a row, you know? They, so they get mad. The girl that I was dating back in the day, we dated for a couple months and everything, you know, everything was cool, good, whatever. We lost a spark, you know, we both can agree on that. And she started dating somebody else. I really didn't care at all, you know, brushed her off, you know, everything was good, all right? Huh, well, well I'm seeing somebody else, I'm happy you understand this and that. I'm like, yeah, cool, all right, you know, whatever, all right, you know, peace, you know? Sure enough, two days later, she called me up, like, flipping the fuck out for no reason at all, no type of, like, no theory behind it, no proof, nothing. Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. I know you were cheating on me. Who are you talking to? I know you are talking to another girl. Like, they just, like... She, and the whole reason why I bring that up is she got so like pissed off and offended the fact that I wasn't like the typical guy that would call her up and blow up her phone. I was a guy that I was kind of like, all right, cool, peace out. And then, and then, you know, she was a really beautiful woman and she's used to guys like, baby, come back to me. Like we even had like, you know, I, be, be, all right, so being a dating coach, you know, I like picking women's brains. So we already had a conversation about the shit and she told me about how guys will sit there and like, you know, beg for them back, like, and start crying, and, like, guys will send them messages about how they're, like, suicidal, and they can't live without them type <laughs> shit, you know, that, it, was, it was a funny conversation. She naturally just got, like, so pissed off at the fact that I wasn't like these guys, and that I pretty much took away the validation from her. She didn't get the validation of knowing, huh, I left him, and now he's desperate and begging for me back, like, girls want shit like that. What you're doing when you beg for them back and you start doing the whole crying, baby, come back to me thing, you're boosting their ego like a motherfucker. It's just nothing but validation for them. And that's the complete opposite of what you should be doing. You shouldn't be giving them any validation, period, at all. You shouldn't like, You shouldn't even be like calling them for shit. A, a guy will sit there and like call their ex up to get something stupid and petty back. I don't know, like a fucking t-shirt they got for free at some fucking like little raffle that says Walmart on it or some, something stupid like that. Like, look my t-shirt at your house. Like, shit like that, man. Fuck that. Why the fuck would you want a t-shirt that says Walmart on it? No one gives a fuck about Walmart. Why the fuck would you want that goddamn t-shirt? Man, fuck that. Man, if you left your fucking makeup at her house, goddamn, leave your makeup at her fucking house. You don't need that shit. Even the people that work at Walmart don't even want to wear a Walmart t-shirt. So why the fuck would she care? Honestly, I never seen a Walmart t-shirt in my goddamn life. <laughs> I seen the vest though. <laughs> That's the type of shit you you clean your your, your house with. You you wash your 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 you shine up your tires with a Walmart t-shirt and shit like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like when them t-shirts like that shit. your dad give you like Bahamas 1989 and shit like it's old and tag. You just like I'm gonna wipe my tires with this shit. Let me shine my shoes with this shit. But I mean like point point being like the, the cheap ass shit like. Like that like if it's something like really cheap and petty you know what i'm saying just take it as a loss you know what i'm saying like if it, even if you got like you know 50 dollars worth of shit over there man and you really want to get her back just take it charge that shit to the game let it charge go to the game. you really just want to just like confuse her you want to like throw her off throw her off her game you know mm -hmm. women they know what they're doing they have their little tactics they have you know they they wait have, a minute hold on wait a minute picture in their mind wait a minute hold on women run game too are you serious? Mm -hmm. Women know how to. Women know get. Yep. Wait a minute! I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I looked that up. I today. don't believe. I learned that. that shit today, guys. They're innocent angels. They don't <laughs> manipulate God. They don't run game. They don't do. I know. I thought the same thing until today. <sighs> My until mind today's is day. blown right now. Like they like like during breaks up. Like they 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 know what they're gonna do. Like they fucking like. They have it mapped out in their head. They expect it every fucking time. Guys watching this shit, you know, if you have, like, female friends, go ahead and use our information and pick their brain. That's one of the secrets of the game. Most pick guys don't brain. do that. Like, they got a bunch of friends. They got cousins. They got aunties. And they don't use that as a resource to learn about these women. Even, like, hell, even, like, your sister, man. Use your fucking sister to, like, kind of pick their brain. And, you know, if a guy breaks up with you, no, 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 like, ask them. Like, women, like... Women do like talking about stuff like that. And another particular facet of the no contact rule of female psychology is the fact that her ego is bruised and women cannot stand rejection. I don't care that she broke up with you. I know that may be a little bit confusing, but feel us on this. Because relationships are all about leverage. It's all about a negotiation and who has the power. She revels in the fact that, I, yeah, I, I can call him up right now. He'll be over my place right now. And I'll tell him to go get me some wing stop. I'll tell them to go get me some some juicy juice. I'll tell them to go get me, you know, some Moscato. 
Some chicken. And some chicken. Some he'll motherfucking do chicken. That lemon pepper, he'll bring it over in the cup because I don't, I don't like the lemon pepper to be too much glaze. Make them have all drumsticks because I don't like the lemon pepper to be too heavy and put it in a you know, cu side cup. And he will do it. But just the fact that you are able to pull back you pull the power back into your core. So it bruises her ego to know that she can't have you anymore and be a little puppet and, you know, pulling the strings because she likes that power. And also another facet of that is because you're not giving her that attention and you're not giving her that validation. You're not blowing her up. A lot of women like to have men just blowing them up, even the ones that they don't like. The worst thing that a woman can have is a dry phone. You want to see a woman who's suicidal? Let it be zero text, zero Snapchat, zero DMs. She's suicidal. She don't know what to do. She's drawing the bab. You call a girl, she's like, oh my God, a man is calling me right now and it's been days since nobody's hit her up. She's going to be drawing a bab and putting that toaster, putting the plug into the jack and about to throw a toaster in her tub because she's about to commit suicide. And that's why... Antidepressants are prescribed to women 80% more than men. Kind of being silly, but on some real shit, women consume 80% more antidepressants than men. They make up 80% of the antidepressants in the in, you know, pharmaceutical industry. Men take up the 20%. Dogs take up some too, but they weren't in the statistic that I read too. <laughs> they don't get that validation. If they don't get that that uh that that fuck boy you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, validating them, blowing their phone up, calling them, telling them they're pretty on their on their social media and stuff like that, they get depressed. If they don't get those likes on their Facebook, they'll get depressed. And if you don't hit her up after the breakup, she's going to get depressed. And that depression is going to lead to panic. And when she panics, she's like, oh my God, you know what? He doesn't want me anymore. Like, did he even love me? Like, how could he not even be hitting me up anymore after the breakup? She's going to enter a stage of panic because now she's not used to this. And we just touched on this earlier. You're in a certain pattern, and when you pull back and you're going, you're throwing her a monkey wrench at this point. She doesn't know how to react. And when women, when they get in their feelings, and not just women, just when people, and when people get in a particular mindset of panic, their behavior is unpredictable. But in terms of a breakup, when she's going through panic, she's gonna reach out. And when she texts you, it could be like a myriad of like texts. She could say, hey, big head, hey, stranger. Oh my God, how the fuck, why won't you text me? Scarcity is one of the biggest motivators in life, not just with a breakup, but in terms of civil unrest, in terms of rioting and, and government uh, uprising and, and, and marketing and, and psychological tricks and parenting and things like that. The reason why scarcity is so powerful, which is what the no contact rule is based on. The currency is, is attention. You pull that attention out of the market. And we saw what happened with that. Chicken. <laughs> People were going crazy in the streets over chicken. Over he was chicken, one of them. Over chicken. Toilet papers, hand sanitizer, it provokes an immense response in people because the only thing we really truly have is freedom and freedom of choice. And when that freedom gets restricted, it's gonna provoke us to act in unbelievable manners. So scarcity, what it does, it places it places that particular currency or that particular tangible thing, it places value on that thing. It's like exclusivity. And with women, they value attention. So when you pull that attention away, it makes it, it, makes it super exclusive now. Your attention is the equivalent of a Bugatti right now or Rolex or something of super supreme value. And when something is in a limited quantity, we place huge value on it because it's scarce. It's not something that you could, you know, really, you know, get out and touch and just, you know, take for granted like water or things that are in abundance. So when we place that that huge value on it and it limits our control over it. Before, you were blowing her up, hitting her up all day, begging her, getting on her knees, doing drive-bys. She saw you, took you for granted. Like, oh, you know, I, I can have him over right now, like we just said. But when you pull it back, and you go ghost, you go no contact. Now she's like, wait a minute. This is not how the game was supposed to go. And now she's going to place you at a premium because that control, that freedom is gone. It's inherent with us to have that control. That's what we are as human beings. We have to have that control. And when you restrict that control, what you're doing by going no, by going no contact, you're going to make her react to you because now you're scarce. Your attention is scarce. Your validation is scarce. Your time is scarce. Your physical being, being that you're not even in her face anymore, is gone. And that's insanely powerful. And once you grasp that, once you understand that, the game is yours. So now she's going to be chasing you because you're not there anymore. And when you pull back, when things are scarce, 
when freedom is scarce, when chicken is scarce, people are going to gravitate towards that in mass numbers. When chicken is scarce. <laughs> and they're going to they're gonna gravitate towards that because now even if it's something that they didn't want, she didn't want you, but now you pull yourself out of the arena and you become scarce. And now she's going to move towards you. So if you're over here trying to get your ex back, you know, trying to pick up women, hit us up at blackbookbasics.com forward slash private coaching. I like how to do the forward slash private coaching. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Thank you.